Hello, this is Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. In today's episode, we are going to be going over how to build these easy bass traps for your home studio. These ones came together very nicely. As you can see, we did a nice desert brown fabric as part of our collection. And we did some panels for this client. We did a cloud for this client, a custom size panel for his door, and these four bass traps. Now, this video is about these bass traps, how to build them, and how to install them. This is an easy method uh, that I offer for my clients who want a more permanent base trapping solution. And it's actually quite easy to build and the finished product looks quite nice as you can see here. And you can customize all of your trim and fabric to make it suit your studio and your space. So here is the room as it started. This was the blank slate that my client came to me with. And after we decided upon the build, we got started. So the very first thing we did was we installed the acoustic panels and I have plenty of videos on my channel. I'll link to one above here somewhere of how to build and install these acoustic panels. So we just did that quickly in the beginning. That was the first day of the install. Let's well, just getting these panels up. So just putting the anchors into the walls and hanging. Now we're getting started on these base traps. So you can see here I am test fitting and I'm mocking up where the trim is going to finish because this client's room had these electrical outlets that were relatively close to all of the interior corners. So we had to make these traps about one foot wide so that we're able to clear all of those electrical outlets on all four corners. So once we have our width of the trap, we are simply cutting all of our wood to the width and we're going to be building essentially panel frames. So just a rectangular frame that we are going to screw into the wall on a 45 degree angle. This is going to provide the structure for our base traps and the corner of the wall is actually going to provide the rest of the triangle. So we're only building the front face, the visible front face of this base trap. So you can see I just made that panel there and we're going to repeat that process. So I always make my first frame whenever I'm doing floor to ceiling base traps, I make my first frame at four feet tall because the acoustic insulation that I use comes in four feet tall. So it just makes it easy to fit inside the frame nicely. So there's our frame built. I just put it together using three inch construction screws and then I'm just screwing it into the corner on a 45 degree angle. I measured out a few marks at I believe nine inches, nine and a half inches on both sides of the wall from the interior corner. And I just use that as reference when I'm lining up the frame into the corner. And once again, just using those three inch construction screws to secure them into the drywall. Now this particular client had a layer of five eighths drywall and sauna pan behind. So the three inches of screws was plenty enough. And this is not a structural um, screw. This is just to adhere the frames to the drywall and make sure they're nice and sturdy. There you can see all the frames put in. So the first frame is four feet tall. I added a little brace at the bottom there to hold all the insulation in place. And then the second frame on top, you just measure to size and you just build your vertical pieces at that length so that it fits floor to ceiling for your application. This is the fabric that the client wanted to go with for his project. It's a desert brown poly wool blend that I offer through my company. And I'm just cutting this into four equal parts because my base traps are only about a foot wide. So I only need about a foot wide segment of fabric for each, for each trap. This is the rock wool safe and sound. This is what will be filling the inside cavity of the base traps. So you can see I'm just cutting them into triangular shapes, the same size as the trap and just filling the entire cavity all the way. Now you can squish these down a little bit to make sure that you have a nice full coverage and nice and dense material in there. This is the Rockwell Comfort Board 80. This is a denser insulation, acoustic insulation product. This is the same material that I use in my panels most times. And this just fits right into these frames. So I cut them to size and just put them into the frames. This provides a nice, solid, hard, rigid surface to the base traps. Uh, without this, if you pressed your hand on the fabric, it would be squishy and just isn't really the most professional. And this adds more absorption and a higher density material as well. So I'm just stapling the fabric on top. I'm using a pneumatic stapler, but you can just use a handheld stapler. That's how I did it for the first couple of years. And here is the trim that I'm using. This is just an MDF flat casing. This is similar to what you would use as like your baseboards or to case a door or a window. And you can see I cut that nice 45 degree angle on both sides so that it 
butts up nicely against both sides of the wall. So you can see that that piece of trim will sit right on top of the baseboards, just like the base trap frame does. And now we're ready to put in these pieces. So I'm using an 18 gauge finish nailer with some 18 gauge nails right there. I believe we're using one inch nails. This is only half inch trim. So just tacking it into the top and bottom. And now that I have my top and bottom pieces of trim, now we can do our long vertical segments of trim. So you can see I set up the table saw on a 45 degree angle so that I can rip cut this nice 45 degree bevel on our long pieces of trim. And I used a wider piece of trim for these top and bottom piece, or for these left and right pieces rather. So that way it is covering all of the staple and fabric marks. And same, same deal, just trim this to size, tack them in, and that nice 45 degree bevel allows this trim to sit nice and flush up against the wall. You'll see a nice close up of that right now. And it's as simple as that. Everything after this is just cosmetic to make the traps look nice. So I'm just using a wood filler here to fill in the nail holes and just applying with my finger and up in the, uh, the gaps where the trim pieces meet as well. So once all that filler is in there, I just give it some time to dry and set up and I hit it with a light sanding. And then after the sanding, I came in with just a damp rag and the damp rag actually gets away the majority of the excess filler. And then what you're left with right now, as you can see, is filler in only where the nail holes were and where those joints are. So that damp rag really cleans everything up and gets you ready for the finishing paint. Because these, piece, these pieces of trim, they just come primed. It's just primed MDF. So I picked up some nice semi-gloss white trim paint. I actually brought in a sample piece of trim from this client so we could get color matched. And there's the finished product, all painted up, all nice, ready to dry. And here is a little sneak peek, just a little mini tour of this home studio. This one was a really fun one. I like these small, compact home studios. These are nice, cozy spaces to get a lot of work done, especially if you're just a producer or if you're mixing or you're just kind of want a nice private space at home to work on your music, this is such a great option for people. And you can actually get good sound out of it if you treat it properly, right? So I really hope you followed along, really hope you learned something. I hope you build these bass traps for your own home studio. If you ever have any questions, feel free to email me, soundheadquartersinc at gmail.com. Please check out my website, Instagram, all of that good stuff. Subscribe for more home acoustics for commercial acoustics. We got some really cool projects coming up on the channel. Really, really appreciate everyone watching. Stay tuned and peace out.